I'm going to talk to you about HROs or high reliability organizations. These are organizations which operate with highly hazardous technology but do so with far fewer accidents than you might expect. So the question is how do they achieve that outcome? And the answer is that they are continuously mindful or aware of the possibility that something might go wrong, a major accident might occur. They know that the longer they go without a major accident, the more likely they are to become complacent about that possibility. So they're wary of their own success and they worry constantly about the possibility of failure. HROs know that prior to every major accident, there are always warning signs or indicators that something is about to go wrong. Warnings which if they had identified them and responded to them, they could have prevented that accident from occurring. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about anomalies, strange events, things which are not quite as they should be, precursor events, things which are precursors, known to be precursors to major accidents. So um, HROs will identify what are the kinds of warning signs which are particularly relevant in their environment and they'll ask their people to be particularly sensitive to these kinds of things. So let me give you an example which is air traffic control. I choose air traffic control because it's often um, used in this context. Um, it, it's its behaviour ap approximates that of an HRO. What do they fear uh, in air traffic control? They fear a mid-air collision. What is the precursor to uh, a mid-air collision? It's when aircraft are closer together than they are supposed to be. They may still be kilometres apart. It may not be dangerous in fact, but they are closer than they are supposed to be. Those are called breakdowns of separation. And air traffic control counts, monitors those breakdowns of separation very closely and they know that if the trend begins to move upwards then safety is deteriorating and they know they have to redouble their efforts in relation to safety. So what you need to do in your environment is identify what are the precursor events, what are the warning signs which we're most concerned about in our environment and sensitise your people, train your people to be alert to those kinds of things. HROs treat near misses as learning opportunities. In one sense they don't distinguish between the near miss on the one hand and an incident on the other because they know they can learn as much by analysing the causes of the near miss as they can by analysing the causes of, of the accident. So they don't make that clear distinction that many other companies make between a near miss and an accident. HROs are also very concerned not to overload their employees. We can see this again in air traffic control if you think about it, the controller in front of a screen and there are more aircraft on the screen than he or she can cope with. Uh, what you find is that um, air traffic controllers will drift around behind this, the person who is doing the job just to monitor, just to check to make sure that nothing is missed. So this is a, an important aspect of HRO functioning, the capacity, the flexibility to have additional people come and help in situations of high stress. We can generalise that a little bit and say that HROs tolerate a, a high degree of staffing redundancy, by which I mean more staff than is necessary to do the job in the normal course of events. The last thing I want to say is what can you do as a manager to encourage that mindset that I'm talking about, that, that constant awareness of danger what the best thing you can do is to, in, is to encourage your staff to be alert and to report things. This reporting um, theme is one which I, I often emphasise, that what you want your staff to do is to report when things are strange, when they don't understand what's going on. Don't um, just accept it, don't assume that it will all work out, report it. And that's the, that's the single most important thing you can do with your staff to encourage um, HRO functioning. How do you encourage them to report? By thanking them, by acknowledging them. This is very important. By celebrating when they give you a report which is particularly helpful in avoiding a major accident event, you celebrate it. You, 
you, you've, you advertise to the organisation that we have had this wonderful report that's been particularly helpful. And by celebrating in that way, you will encourage everybody, everybody else to uh, focus their reporting on those kinds of things as well. Mm -hmm.